Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pillars of Eternity with Trix 2. So, in last episode, we I guess we technically completed the Temple of Wodaka down here by going in here and killing everybody in this room and finding out that there's some uh, new quests to be done. Here's my journal, there it is. The Man Who Waits, Undying Heritage, and Through Death's Gate, which is in Deerford Village, which... That place is kind of scary. I shall. Let's step in here, kill some more people. Or one chap, it looks like. Yeah, he's about to have a bad day. Yep, that didn't take long. Yeah, grab his coinage. Ooh, let's come over here. Let's. On the hunt. Yeah. Queen it was and still is. Dear sisters, do you remember your first deliverance when you strangled. Okay. Um. Ah, uh -huh. excellent. Um, yeah. Where was the other one? There it is. And money. Okay. And this. A book lies on the table. This page is filled with some kind of unintelligible cryptography. Okay. Um. Well, I guess that wasn't much of a much of a remainder then. Uh, let's go see if this if these stairs lead anywhere. Um. Hmm, buy balloon to add it to the stash. Uh, I th think that with that we could actually in. Yeah, because we got. Vessel. Oh, okay, we don't have any moonstone. Cool. Um, right, so we got some binding copper, which is nice. Because we were missing that for the enchanting. Either that or it was Bloomstone we were missing, and I'm just not sure where to find that. So let's head up these stairs and see what enemies there are that we can deal with. It's a little early in the mornings, and my I have something in my eye, and it's making it water, and so it's making the game hard to play because my eye keeps wanting to close to get whatever it is out, so that's why I seem to be Aha! We have arrived in Indeed. Hello, Mr. Moment, Ghost. Please. I feel I should explain myself. <laughs> okay. Um there's the there we go. About my episode in the catacombs. There's something I should have told you earlier. So, tell me now. He clasped his hands together, like slowly massaging a knuckle with his thumb. I meant no harm. I thought I could keep it to myself. But when we resolved the matter of your soul, we would also address my problem. I also have an awakened soul. But unlike yours, mine is a presence that shares my senses and my skin, making herself manifest at the most unwelcome times. Aha. Uh -huh. He closes his eyes and grits his teeth. His lips quiver and twitch with the vestiges of some internal debate. Several seconds later, he opens his eyes again. They're watery and bloodshot. I'm sorry. I've tried to learn to control Isolmir. I've gotten stronger, but so has she. Tell me about Isolmir. Artless, uncouth, a creature of rash impulses and feeble faculties. She wags her impertinent tongue when she should listen. <laughs> Hey, this one's fit to boil. Hard to get this gaff over anything tisn't to do with books and spill speak. <laughs> it's funny because it's the same voice actor. He grimaces, running his hands through his hair. I have none of her memories. Bareth spared me that much. <clears throat> but her coarse manner is an intolerable heil speak suggests a provincial from a very, very long time ago. She tends to surface a hair's breadth from conflict, when the fuse is burned down and teeth are on edge. And when she shows up, she doesn't stop to gauge the situation. She just acts. <sighs> hmm. She seems reckless. That's it exactly. You recall the way she go to those villagers in Gilded Vale? She doesn't think, and she doesn't back down. I'm trying to express that has been my problem for years. Why didn't you say something sooner? I learned to keep her a secret a very long time. <coughs> Those with awakened souls are shunned, mistrusted, 
And after your experience with Meowald, I'm certain you can see why. We need to be careful. Is this going to be a problem? Merely an annoyance. Although... He lowers his voice and clasps his, clasps his hands behind his back. Minute twitches and spasms along his arms betray his fidgeting. Defiance Bay is said to have an entire institution dedicated to the study and cure of soul-related ailments. Since our journeys have already brought us to the city, perhaps we could speak with someone there. If it's helpful to you, we'll go. Thank you. This has been a great burden. Well, let's go. Uh, Awakenings expert in Defiance Bay. Do you have anything more to say? Okay. I guess not. Hmm? Well, he has more to say, but I'm not interested in it. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to hook up there. Hmm. Andrew's Gift. Violent Embassy. Duckle Palace. Brackenbury. I have a feeling that what he's talking about is the... Uh, Copper Lane. Or the guys in the, the Dunred Row. That was it. So let's go see if... <coughs> let's go see if they're even open. And see about having a word with them. Uh, what, there was something else we had to do in Defiance. But I think we had to go to, to the the docks, to Andre's gift, and try and open a tower there. Either that or it's inherit. It's inherited. The no, it might be the one in Heritage Hill. Uh, we'll try the the docks first, just because they're closer. Or, it, Rather, they're less enemy infested. Uh, we might be the reason that here. Don't you ever feel curious about Isilmir's uh, history? Not even a little. But think of the opportunities. You could learn so much about the past. There are some things I'm happy not knowing. <laughs> I I I'll kind of grant him that one. Um. Oh, those catacombs. Scrimmage dormitory. First Nick's house. Goose and fox. Uh, house of okay. Um, right. This is the wrong place, and I don't remember where. Maybe it's Brackenbury that it's in, and not Copper Lane been a little bit since I was there and actually it's been about a month now that I'm thinking about it so I have I, I don't know this game nearly well enough to be able to remember exactly where things are I didn't want the right um, my headphone check is sometimes finicky and that's that's occasionally why I get Hadrid House, here we go. This is what we needed. Um, excuse me a moment. Sorry about that. Had to cough and did not want to do it in your in the ears of anybody listening with headphones. Right. Pretty sure this is the one I wanted. This is what I wanted. Uh, let's see. We're looking for anybody with a name. Uh, how about you? How do you do? Uh, you look as though you look, you could use some help. Not at liberty to discuss my work, unfortunately. So you need confidence of Lady Webb before I could share. Uh, okay. Hmm. Right. Anybody in here that we can else with a name? Cause I'm pretty sure these are the guys we were looking for. Uh. 
Mm -hmm. Let me sprint over this way. Uh, right. Uh, hmm. Maybe this is not the place we need to be. Uh, let's check our journal. The icons are a little hard to work out which one you're looking for. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not exactly sure that there's a... Hmm. I may have to look this one up. I don't recall hearing any of the in-game rumors talking about it, but... Anybody else with a name? Nope, you're the chaps who guard the boss's door. What about over here? Hmm. All right. I kind of I kind of like watching everybody run around the room. All right. Well, let's head to, to Andre's gift and see if the tower up that I need to need to be able to get into is there. Need something? No. I I'm here. Need everybody to get over the door, please. Because you must gather a party before venturing forth. Uh, hmm. I, 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 this is supposed to be the place that is about was about reading souls. So, although I guess maybe they're more of an investigative branch, it suggested that they were more of a, of Scotland Yard than. Um, well. Oh, how about the sanitarium? That might be the thing we need. Duh. Just hear me out with a procedure. Procedure her soul would be returned intact, more or less. More or less. Is that just how you present on presenting your idea to Ethel Moore? <laughs> um, why? Not good. You think? Not good. Uh. Hello. Greetings. A woman stands in the shade of the <coughs> of the garden, muttering to herself. She's fixated on the pages of a large and well-worn tome, seemingly oblivious to the blooming flowers and cool, fragrant breeze. She only looks up when your shadow crosses her page. Do you mind? I'm ra rather busy. What are you so busy with? She snaps her book shut. <coughs> I'm studying soul attachment. We all know that souls move into people at birth and out of them at death, but we still have a lot of questions about what makes them stick, so to speak. What do you mean making them stick? She brushes a stray lock from her forehead. Souls power bodies and give their tissues life, but only when they're firmly attached. It's separation that leads to a whole spate of soul-related ailments, including the hollowborn. But if we understood how to reattach souls, we could end Widewind's legacy, maybe even conquer death. She scratches behind her ear. That's a theory, anyway. Unfortunately, I don't have all of the research I would need to put into practice. What exactly do you need? There's a manuscript called a th Theorems of Pangram. It contains research from Pangram's experiments on detached souls. The Hall of Revealed F Mysteries is rumored to have a copy in the Elder Archives. <coughs> Pangram's work is considered to be one of the more uh, daring animanti texts. Not something generally circulated amongst, among novices, nor is it easy to get hold of. I wonder if we might have a peek at it. The theorem could advance my research by leaps and bounds, but Grimda, the High Archivist, worships Whale, which means she has some s paradoxical views on sharing and restricting knowledge. And since she's not exactly a proponent of animancy, she tends to restrict the kind of kinds of information that would be useful to me. Maybe she could be persuaded. You're welcome to try, but you wouldn't be the first. She sighs. Look at me, spilling my troubles. It's kind of you to listen, but I should really get back to my work. Anything else? Uh, here, you'll never believe what I found. You, Lady of Lament, you really found it. N Ned and Cressa cradles the musty tomes like a newborn. I can't believe it. It really exists. She looks back to you. Thank you so much. This will be invaluable. She almost turns 
to the book, but at the last moment she remembers herself and gives you a bag of coin. Uh, I was glad to help. Anything else? I'll leave you alone. Farewell. Huzzah. <coughs> Um, okay. Awesome. I don't... Alright. Did anybody level up? Aha! Yes, we have leveled up. Huzzah. Now it's time to spend the remainder of the episode dithering over how to level up. Um... Right. Uh, it's all about the mechanics. All right, next. Ooh, weapon mastery ruffian, saber, stiletto, club, pistol, and blunderbuss. Offensive, defensive, utility. What on earth is field tri triage? No. Oh. Nope. It's got to be weapon mastery ruffian. <coughs> Fantastic. Okay, and eater. Uh, four, five, and increased consumable duration sucks. Uh, but we'll give you some more. Oh, and mechanics? No. Um, use level one scrolls. Sure. Weapon Mastery Adventurer. Wary Defender. Nope, bonus knockdown. Fantastic. And best of all, Kana. <coughs> Excuse me. Because between them, Kana and Aloth are becoming my fa my favorite characters. Um, mechanics. Let's get you some survival. Survival 3 is bonus movement. Oh, I see. Okay. Got it. So, okay. So these are how you get the camping bonuses. That's why he hasn't had any. Excellent. Let's see. Okay. Is it charm spell? Uh, huh, that could be useful. Brinny Derrett's Ghost Spake, I'll catch you, Ben Fiddle. Okay. That's Fear Spell. Ooh, summoning. Three worms. Sound of his voice, the killer froze stiff. Paralyzes enemies in the area of effect. Felled by the axe, or broken by the storm. Buff. Yeah, let's summon a phantom. And beloved spirits. Improves the chantress chantress connection to the soul fragments they employ, increasing ancient memory's healing capabilities. What on earth is ancient memory? Okay, sure. We'll do that. And that's done. Huzzah. Alright. Um, where's our character sheet? <sighs> right. Ancient memory, there we go. Passive. Must be chanting. Speed average. Invokes primal energy, causing allies within range to benefit from constant endurance while the regeneration while the chanter is chanting. Oh, that's awesome. And plus one every three levels after. Oh, awesome. Yeah, field triage. Gunner. And beloved spirits. So it also adds... Cool. I don't know if it added the, um... I'm here. Hang on, what was... 
Kena. This. Right. Most. Oh, okay. I've had the most hits. Eater's taking the most damage. And Haravis has been most out, knocked out the most times. So Haravis is kind of a glass cannon and. Yeah, lots of glass. Very cannon. Um, I've had the most hits, but Eater's killed the most things. Okay. And he's. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of damage. Clock. Okay, all the silent. Huh. That's kind of awesome. Benevolent still okay. Huh. That's cool. Alright, let's yeah. head in here. See if we can find somebody who knows about um soul illnesses. Which given the people outside I suspect is this place and somebody in here although I'm suspecting that we will probably end up well since the quest updated this must be where we needed to go sanitarium guards whoa okay extend a formal invitation and see to it that necessary preparations are made of course um, alright let's be Nice. Uh, a well-maintained statue of a middle-aged man presides over the room, looking down unblinking over the bustle of harried academics pestered by the hopeful desperate. A strong warmth emanates from it that you could sense from across the room. There is a human soul stored beneath the stonework. You feel its attention turned towards you. It has been some time since a watcher graced these halls. His voice echoes deeply, rumbling the floor beneath you. I am envious of, envious of your natural insights, Traveler. I can only imagine how it might have helped my work in life. Now, what has brought you to my sanitarium? Oh! Uh... You... I'm curious as to how you've come to be in your present state, actually. In the statue, you mean? Well, he laughs. I was old, and it seemed wrong to me. A life... Lifetime spent in pursuit of discovery, only to lose it all at death. Somewhere, some day, I would wake up in a new body, none the wiser, and pursue a different course entirely. All that experience wasted. If we are ever to unearth the principles behind our existence, it will be in spite of our condition. Of that, I am quite sure. To live on as part of something I helped build seemed to me a better legacy than what nature had in store. The transfer itself was quite simple, as our techniques go, and for that I am grateful. Playing with souls is far easier to accept when they are not your own. I do miss being able to take an active role in the scholarly efforts here. Now and again, one of our animancers will humor me and consult over some problem, but they are a jealous breed and are oft too often afraid to collaborate. If you are considering it yourself, I can tell you it isn't for the easily bored. <laughs> uh, you may have a l member of the leaden key in your mist midst. I d do they? Ethelmere groans and the stone around him shudders. I could have done without hearing that today. Uh, many have their intrusions into many have their intrusions been into our affairs. Of course, one can seldom be certain whether they've meddled or whether calamity has struck on its own. But a few of their less skilled infiltrators have been exposed from time to time. They are a perpetual nuisance. <laughs> Once again, I am reminded of how em envious I am of your gifts. I suspect they would be of some use in verifying one's identity. You're at odds with the leaden key as well, I take it? They're up to something, and I'm trying to determine what. They're always up to something. Of that you may rest assured. If their plots have come to involve you, you have my sympathies. <laughs> Do you have some idea of who this person might be? I suspect it's a patient. Very well. In that case, I would recommend you speak first with our resident animancers. They have frequent interactions with both patients and both patients and colleagues. You'll find them up here or in the, their offices downstairs. You will report anything suspicious to me immediately. This is my only request. Does anyone know in, here know anything about awakenings? He asks in the stupidest asks the stupidest question in the history of stupid questions. There's an animancer down on the lower floor who came all the way from. Rivua to study them. Take the stairs down and look for Belisig. Farewell. Fantastic. Um, man who waits. I didn't actually didn't actually expect to find this quest here. Um, 
two-sided, uh, where's my map, thank you? Stairs are the back, got it. Hello, Verna. Uh, okay. Nobles, Sanomancers, Iormid, um, this way we just have, whoa, whoa, whoa. This man's soul was torn asunder by a Beowak. As you can see, the patient is unresponsive, common after soul trauma. The answer places a small stone upon the patient's forehead. A portion of the soul is recovered near his body. We use the stone as a vessel for transfer. Can you hear me, Oswin? Must be this guy. The patient's eyes slowly open before a panicked, wild expression washes over him. Unfortunately, the extended dissociation has permanent side effects. The patient becomes more agitated, grunting and moaning as he tugs at his bonds. With further research, we're able we're confident that we'll be able to rehabilitate patients like Oswin. Well then. Oddbill. Uh a bald man with a crooked nose gestures at his in demonstration of a still body of a patient before a small gathering of interested onlookers. Feeling your gaze, he pauses his discussion. Have you come to sit in? Uh anything unusual or suspicious been happening around here? I need a dumber question. Definitely not up here. We can't be scaring off visitors and potential clients, you know. Downstairs is where the uh more esoteric research is done. I check with the animancers there. Fair enough. It's actually kinda useful. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um uh, right. Let's head this way. Anything in here? Nope, okay. Let's head downstairs. Uh, this painting has a uh, rolling forest glen has a strangely soothing effect. I thought there was a person here, but it's a candle candelabrum. It's kind of a cool uh, design. Yes, we know about food items. Can't be used in combat. Can provide bonuses over a long period of time. <sighs> Come on, hurry up. Right. So we're looking for Bella Sage, huh? All right. Uh, door number one. Modred. Uh, maybe later. We're gonna try and find Bella Sage before we run out of. Aha! Everybody into the room. Let's talk to the crazy soul person. Yep. Either close the door. Hello, Bella Sage. A woman paces back and forth, her feet crunching on the soft red carpet. She gestures and mumbles to herself, shaking her head as she pours over pages of notes. She almost walks into you. Nikosi, here I am, looking so hard for answers in my research that I do not see the kith standing in front of me. What can I do for you? I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. She laughs bitterly. Ah, that would be me. Though the lack of research subjects has made me more an expert in counting floorboards. I would like to transfer Animancy's success into buttressing pre-awakened souls to soothing those who are... <coughs> soothing those whose souls have already awakened. That's a difficult sentence. But I need subjects, and most of the patients here are too broken to produce reliable results. It is a tragedy to have come so far for nothing. You're in luck. I have a volunteer. <laughs> Eloth, wait, what? She springs to the balls of her feet, beaming. Gillard, who is it? Aleph's lips curl into a frown. I don't know about this. She grins more broadly still. Don't be silly. The process is perfectly harmless. All you must do is stand in that cage. Right. I beg your pardon? I jest. You Idrins are so uptight. I do not even know what that thing is used for. It belonged to the last occupant of this office, I think. Now they upgrade him to a cell. Again, I jest. She rubs her hands together, getting down to business. So I need you to sit down here. She takes Ale off by the shoulders and steers him to the couch. Then try to relax, but don't try too hard, then you will not be relaxing. 
Oh, good. Indeed, his eyes are humorless. And you must also wear these. A little cold, but the copper will help conduct your essence. The Animancer fastens thick copper bands to Aeloth's forehead and wrists. As she ratchets them tighter, his face twitches with suppressed irritation. Now I'll examine your soul through my scope. She reaches into her desk and produces a long chambered tube of knobs, dials, and small tooth wheels run along the side of the device. It is fitted with adder lenses to cut, cut to different thicknesses and concavities. By manipulating them, I find the angles and densities that will allow me to track the anomalies in your soul. How exciting. I've never seen this sort of thing performed. Kane appears at the device with interest. It seems suitably complicated. Does this mean we'll get to talk to Islemir more? I like that lady. <laughs> she raises a finger. But first, we must find this cunning interloper. He will answer some personal questions while I make adjustments. Sagani pats his arm. Don't worry. I'm sure we won't hear any of it. Ayla scrums on the couch very well. <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, she holds the scope to her eye and flicks a knob. To begin, tell me something personal. Something from a time before your awakening. There's nothing to tell. I was just a normal child living in the Sithwood. He looks to you. His face is set in a frown, but the rigid edges of apprehension show through nevertheless. Uh, talk, uh, what do you remember about your home? As you speak to Aeloth, you feel your voice like feel your voice like a bell in your chest. It tolls softly, luring him into the mists of his own memory. Belisag doesn't seem to notice anything, but you feel as if your words are smoothing his essence, untangling its many threads. I notice I know we're running over at this point. Um he closes his eyes, comfortable, modest, quiet when mother is away, which is most of the time. Quiet enough to hear the clink of glass on wood. This is when I know to be most careful. Father's good about hiding the bottles. Mother, when she is home, is good at pretending not to notice them. Aha. This is good. I'm starting to see something. Continue. Tell us about the time you awaken. She bites her tongue as she twists one of the dials. I am in my fifth year of training. Mother is home. I can let my guard down a little, because when she's around, he's usually only angry with her. But he has heard that I've had trouble casting missiles, that my flame shields are unstable. He is furious that I have failed, and mother present, Mother's presence reminds him that he has failed, too. His first blow takes me su by surprise. One moment I am sweeping the kitchen, the next I am sprawled on the ground, stupidly looking at flecks of my blood on the tile. His boots, glistening with fresh polish, thud across the floor. He kicks me in the stomach, and I curl up to shield my vitals, but it's pointless. Protecting one thing only leaves something else exposed. Still huddled on the ground, I retreat as fast as I can. I retreat until the vision of the kitchen and my own trembling knees is nothing but a pinprick against the field of black. His jaw locks and his eyes twitch beneath their lids. Maricio. Bella Siege fir firm firmly cranks the knobs along her scope. He's hypnotized himself with this old memory. I've got to bring him out of, qu out of it quickly. I almost have it. Uh... You're safe. Everything's fine. Uh, Aeloth's eyes snap open, but the expression you see in them isn't his. He's never safe when I half upon him. Bale Sage sucks in a deep breath through her teeth. That's it. I'm seeing a shift in his essence. Something spreading and congealing. He glances at you over her scope. Keep talking. He seems to respond to you. What brought you here? Cracking bones and high voices in ire. That warm molasses feeling crip crips down your gut when crisis is nigh. Perfetto. We have flares of a totally distinct essence. She jots shorthand notes onto the pages next to her and turns one clicking knob of her scope. Now I've tried to get the two of them talking. Isselmir, tell all Aloth why you've awakened. Fie! He's the one needed me, hiding in his own bone bag like a turtle in, his sh in its shell. Aloth's face twists in fury. I never turned it over to you. Good, yes, very good. She rests from her scribbling only to make another adjustment to her scope. I can now see two separate patterns of essence. Where he ebbs, the other flows. It's as if the awakened soul fills the spaces that he leaves empty. She prompts you with a circling of her wrist, quill still in hand. Go on. Isselmir, what exactly are you taking from him? Nine more than I'm given. He should ask when I did that old, old man of his. However, the last time he laid a hand on us, I break it in three places. <laughs> Aeloth's head jerks to your side. That wasn't your decision. It's never been your decision. <clears throat> now you was awakening, but now I'm stuck with you, and I'll be 
And damned if I let your ninny bah! Damned if I let your ninnying drag us both through the scupper. Ah, very good. <laughs> she lowers her scope and consults her notes. I think I finally got something we can work with. I've tracked Islamir's essence through the throughout the exchange. She had a particularly high dense density index during the most heated portions of their argument, and her essence seemed to localize most clearly in the lower portion of the subject's left rib cage. That's right around the spleen, which of course means that she's triggered by black bile. No doubt the subject's characteristic melancholy is to blame. Aleph blinks back at you in the midst of his perturbation. You're not quite sure who's looking out of his eyes. That's utter horseshit. Nah, it's Aleph. Sagani's eyes are wide and innocent. It does seem so she, but as though she got one thing right. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, she glares at him. Yes, never mind my years of training. I suppose you have a better explanation. <laughs> uh, you're close. I think Islamir's appearances are related to potential sources of trouble for Aloth. Bellacy carefully scratches her jaw, her gaze darting between you and Aloth. I suppose that could be true. She jots another note. I'll have to check this against other research. Aleph removes the copper bands. Well and good for you, but what does this mean for me? Uh, Bellasig frowns at her notes, tapping her cheek with a quill, with a quill and making grand show of concentration. However, you catch her stealing glance at you over the pages. Uh, she did you a favor by dealing with your father, didn't she? I think she's trying to help you stand up for yourself. You may not like her methods, but you should hear her out. If you had to listen to her half as much as I do, you wouldn't say that. He scowls, but you notice something thoughtful in his frown. I've got a lot to process. Regardless, thank you for your help, Triax. He does not look at Belisig. She sets her note on, notes on her desk and returns to her scope. <clears throat> well, I hope this has been as useful to you as it has been to me. I finally have material worth publishing. You'll be the toast of revue of Ventura Aeloth. I'm sure he'll be thrilled. His grimace melts into a crooked smile. Aye, advancing the right wise principles of Anomancy. Just what you've always wanted. <laughs> as you turn to leave, you catch a darting movement out of the corner of your eye. Belisig is homing to herself, still occupied with her scope, but Aeloth is holding her notes. He's just about to <coughs> tuck them into his cloak when he catches you watching them. He holds a finger to his lips, his eyes wide and imploring. <coughs> Please, I don't want my personal information published like this, especially not after her nonsense. I'm sorry, but you, you got your research and she you got your explanation and she gets her research. That was the deal. He slides the papers back onto the desk, giving you a rueful look. I'm nay gonna help you explain this one, scholar boy. <laughs> Yay. And uh Ah, Sagani. He's leveling up. Excellent. Um Aha, athletics. Lots of athletics, thank you. Yep. And uh, talents. Vicious Companion. Ooh. Uh, resilient Companion. It's damage reduction. Sneak attack damage. Eh. Okay, so... There's... Right. I'm not sure how sneak attacks work. I think we'll go with the damage resistance bypassing, because that seems like a better option. Oh, the scroll's stuck again. Oh, wait. See, if it's not added, quest expires in two days. Uh... Okay. Uh... All right, he'll be finished before that guy's done. Uh, Ifin's Cradle... Uh, uh, no, that's not what I want. I want that. Yumerin legend holds that Saint Ifin created a 
Blah. Miraculous knot that the faithless could not untie. A daring burglary recently cleaned out the pre myriad precious relics in the Smith's Hall of Emergal, uh, where each treasure once stood, a string was tied, each leading back to an intricate knot in the center of the temple. The burglar left a tantalizing clue in the form of a written prayer to St. Iphan, but the riddle has stumped the locals. Desperate to recover the artifacts, the priests have reached out to mercenaries and adventurers for help. Uh, grieving mother, get on it. Thank you. 25 experience. Fantastic. And Durance will continue his duties for totally escorting everybody and everywhere, everything, everywhere they want to go. Uh, let me level up. We're already so far over time that, it, that the moments it'll take to level up don't shouldn't matter. Okay, survival... How about some more athletics and sure some more lore? He's got an eye patch and I didn't notice it. Greater wild strike shock. Okay. Uh, utility or uh, offensive. So can we turn into anything else here? Bloody slaughter, penetrating shot, vulnerable attack, interrupting blows, wilder hunter. Ah, uh, here, Sanctifier. We seem to be encountering an awful lot of um, vessels, so bonus damage is always a good idea. Alright, wow. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here, because we've gone way, way, way over time. And next episode, we will continue seeing if, seeing if we can find the um, guy the leaden key member waiting in here to see, work out what they're up to so until then this of has course. been triax 2 and this has been pillars of eternity i will see you guys next time bye <laughs>